So I'd like to now come to the, the uh, why I, I'm arguing very strongly that it's through interventions in education and training that we'll be able to turn South Africa around and that the idea of leaders, uh, leaders, as I said earlier on, are not imposed on society, they emerge organically uh, from society. Let me just briefly say why I believe our education, crisis, education system is uh, in a crisis. These statistics I'm sure all of you know, but I'll just sort of repeat them for, for emphasis. Last year, we had a 75% uh, pass rate in South Africa. In other words, 75% of, of kids uh, managed to pass. In 2002, 1, uh, sorry, 1 1.2 million uh, kids, 1.2 million and 90,000 students entered the schooling system. So basically, last year about 660,000 wrote matric, so about half of them disappeared. Right? Half of the children who started school in 2002 did not write matric last year. Now granted, some of them are still in the school system, they dropped out, they failed. Uh, some of them are, um, uh, you know, would be repeating a, a grade and so on. But roughly, as I said, about half of them only managed to, to uh, write the, the exam. We celebrate the 75% pass rate as a decent number because 75% seems like a very decent uh, number. However, the real pass rate is 29%. Because you've got to look at the actual pass rate based on the numbers who entered the schooling system. And then of the, of the 75%, we argue that 30%, or not we argue, the numbers are 30% of, of children last year of the matrix. Uh, managed to get university exemption, that number is more just over 10%. Okay. What I'm suggesting to you is that we are in a deep, deep-seated crisis, right? More than 90% or just about 90% of the kids who started school in 2002 have no prospects to have a university education to walk into the Nelson Mandela Business School or, or Nelson Mandela University uh, to uh, uh, learn a skill or acquire a um, academic qualification to move their lives uh, forward. The education crisis is deep-seated and the answers does not lie with government. The answers lie in a combination, in my view, uh, between government, the private sector, as well as the not-for-profit uh, sector. Now, why do I, I, I argue that the answers does not lie with government? Surely, the state has to, uh, education is a public good, and the state has to, the state has to provide. The crisis is far too deep-seated in my view. You know, we've got more than uh, 13 million learners in over 27,000 uh, schools in nine provinces in the country. By the time a decision is made at national and uh, with respect to norms and standards and implemented at the school in Motherwell or in uh, uh, Missionville, uh, uh, trust me, there's so many breakdowns in that sort of uh, um, chain of, of accountability. There's a massive failure of accountability throughout the education uh, system. I, I, I said earlier on that it's only through people like ourselves who can be catalysts for change. Each one of us here as, as a parent, I believe, literally, we will change the education system in South Africa one school at a time, uh, one uh, uh, city at a time, one province at a time, before we will have the kind of national outcomes that we uh, desire. But let me give you a, 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 a vote of, of, of a, a sense of, of hope about the future, though. Technology is making so much possible today that we could never dream of before. I think many of you would have heard about the mass open online uh, movement, for example. There are companies that exist now like Udacity, like Coursera. These are large um, uh, MOOCs or mass open online uh, courses, as they're called, and it offers the opportunity for somebody sitting in Motherwell uh, a Township or, or in Missionville uh, to study at some of the leading universities uh, uh, in, in the world. So the possibilities are, are endless if we're able to embrace the kinds of technologies that uh, uh, exist. I'll give you a concrete example of how technology has revolutionized uh, a couple of um, uh, uh, jurisdictions. There are, there are several, I don't know of any coding, coding academies in uh, South Africa. One of the leading uh, laws that many countries are debating now, South Africa is not even having a conversation, is about introducing coding into uh, teaching at primary school uh, level. They've passed a law in the US in 2007 to teach uh, coding. Uh, most schools are now in, in, in developed jurisdictions are introducing 3D printers uh, to give people a sense of any three-dimensional image can be translated into, into something real and uh, concrete. 
Finally, with respect to, to, to new innovations in technology, uh, in education, people have now discovered that the method of learning uh, that kids learn in, in an integrated fashion. So learning about science, technology, engineering, mathematics is now combined into, into one uh, umbrella called STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And there are now STEM schools in a number of uh, countries, uh, including in some African uh, countries. So despite South Africa being the leading, uh, the leading economy in terms of size of uh, GDP, we don't have, a, as far as I know, not a single STEM school. I don't know if you know of any uh, STEM schools that exist in South Africa. I, I know for a fact, because our CEO of Advitech, which is a large education company, we certainly don't have 3D printers in, in most of our schools. Uh, the company intends to do that uh, next year. And we also don't teach, uh, teach uh, coding. All of these ideas that might seem revolutionary, it is possible with the available technology and with the available resources at our disposal, for us to introduce these um, advanced technology ideas into our education, our education system.